we become extremely devil conscious if we're not careful. We talk about him a lot. We, we really do. We talk about what the devil, well, the devil this, the devil that, the devil did. If we'd spend half that amount of time talking about Jesus and what he did, it would be an amazing transformation. Amazing. It's an answer cautious, answer conscious, victory conscious Christianity. It's, it's not about the problem. We're not troubleshooting. <laughs> We're not called to troubleshoot. It's not about what the devil's saying to me. He's a liar. What's it matter? Well, yeah, but the devil's saying, so what? He's a liar. Flip it and you got your answer. Pray for me. The devil's really been speaking stuff to me. Man, you ought to be excited. He's a liar. Flip it. He says, you're never going to make it. You must be going to make it. Why do you even let that move you? Why do you need prayer? You do not need prayer. You need to believe the faith. You're never going to make it. You're never going to make it. Oh my God, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to make it. Will you pray for me? I don't feel like I'm ever going to make it. I break you, devil, and I bind your voice in my brother's life, and I command you to never speak to him again. And you hang up the phone, and the devil says, you're never going to make it. (laughs) It doesn't change a thing. You have to replace the lie with truth. The weapon of your warfare is mighty in the breaking down of strongholds. Strongholds are things that fix here, that become beliefs. And the weapon of your warfare is mighty in the breaking them down. It's taking every thought that rises above the knowledge of God and bringing it into captivity in obedience according to Christ, the truths in Christ. So if you're never going to make it, you're never going to make it, you're never going to make it, guess what you do? Father, I so thank you that your spirit is in me and your favor is towards me. And I thank you, Father, that my feet are ready to run in destiny. And God, there's nothing that can stop us now. The Lord is my helper. What can man do to me? If God is for me, who can be against me? God, I don't see how I'm getting to the finish line, but I know there's one and there's destiny and we're going to write legacy and it's going to speak forever and there's no stopping now. I'm forever encouraged in you. Thank you for the grace of my life. And yeah, and the devil says, ah, and he has just thrust you to the throne. Or you listen to him and get deceived and need cheered on when Jesus has already cheered you on. The only victory in this equation is faith. It's faith. It's believing God. People say, well, I just, I just, I just don't know. God doesn't love you. You've done so many things. How could God ever love you? You've you've messed up so many things. How can God ever love you? He already sent his son. He already died on the cross. He already said, I love you through the cross. He already said, I love you through the resurrection, the ascension, and the pleading of his blood on your behalf. He already has spoken through his son. I love you. And the just shall live by faith. Why do we sell out cheap when we've been bought at such a high price? (laughs) Well, God can't love you. He can't possibly love you. If he loved you, then this wouldn't happen. And this wouldn't went wrong. And this wouldn't be this way if God really loved you. Yeah, 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 yeah. What does any of that have to do with God loving you? The cross is the measuring stick of God's love. Period. And you're supposed to be rooted and grounded through that truth, the truth, and it crushes everything else and nothing else can take advantage of you ever again in your heart and soul. And then you're established in the the faith, you're rooted and grounded in love, faith works through love, and you'll never be talked out of it again. I would care less if the devil would begin to try to speak to me all the time. He would turn me into a madman for the gospel. I feel like I'm heading there. (laughs) And I'm not even hearing his voice. He, He doesn't even speak to me like he did in the beginning. For months I heard curse words in my head when I was three months saved. 
merciless, vile, foul, lying, fallen spirit, devil. Cut off, withering branch, coming to nothing. Trying to be somebody and get attention and get me to focus on him and stroke him and give him power when he's crushed. I don't even talk to him. He's not worth the time of my day. (laughs) I don't ever talk to him. I love ignoring him. I'm in another realm. I won't talk to him. I submit to God. And as I submit to God, he is completely resisted. And he flees. And if he shows up, he just finds me submitted to God. So he's resisted. He's got to flee some more. And he shows up and I'm still submitted to God. And he's still got to flee because he's resisted. And all of a sudden, I know I'm his sheep. And I know his voice. And forever, I'll never follow a stranger's. Why? Because in this clear identity, a stranger's voice is so strange. Try to tell me that God doesn't love me. (laughs) You follow me? Try to tell me I'm not worthy now. That I've seen the gospel. Try to tell me I'm never going to make it. You will turn me into a preaching machine. My heart will rise up and I will proclaim and worship and God will manifest his glory in my life. Three months old in the Lord, curse words, vile phrases that I didn't even say when I was in the world. I'm devouring the word. I'm seeking God. I'm literally turning my clocks to the wall in the bedroom and closing the door because I didn't want a reason to come out until it was time. And I had a job and I had a family and everything was in order and priority, but I didn't want to be distracted. If I had time to be with him, I wanted to be. So I shut everything down and sought him in a secret place. And in that place, you start freaking out the enemy because he says, oh my God, he's not a confessing Christian. Oh my God, he's surrendered. He's given his life. He's tapping into truth. He might one day see what I know. I better trick him. I better mess with him. I better speak to him. My God, I used to own him. I've lost him now. He's caught up with Jesus. He's looked into his lovely eyes and he's in love. I'll change that. And all of a sudden, these curse words start going through my head, directed towards the Lord, and a lot of it towards Holy Spirit. And I didn't know anything about the scriptures of blaspheming Holy Spirit and all that stuff. And, 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 and the devil knows that I'm going to bump into that in a minute because I'm devouring the word. And then I'm going to think, oh my God, I've done that. This is crazy. So I'm hearing these curse words, and I found that a lot of people have heard curse words in their head directed to the Lord. I've never done this ever, ever, ever in my life in churches preaching. How many people have heard phrases you wish you didn't hear in your head directed to the Lord in your life? Let me see your hands. Wow. Isn't the devil a jerk? Do you know what he does? He wants you to question your heart. He wants you to believe that everything you think, everything that goes through your mind is you. Who's ever thought something that bothered them? It wasn't you. It was interjected. It was a lie trying to grab your identity and sell you cheap. It was outside trying, you know, it was an old lust, an old desire, no mind. Who's ever had a memory of the past and it it made you upset and you wish you didn't remember it? But watch, and you don't have to raise your hands because too many hands will go up on this one. And then you sought ministry to get free because you felt like it was still in you. It's outside of you trying to get back in. And as soon as you accept it as you, you give things place. And the faith stops that. If your heart doesn't want it, it's not you. If it bothers you, it's not you. If you wish you didn't see it, then what's it matter that you saw it? Because you wish you didn't. So when you see it, it gives you the platform to rejoice in your freedom and the transformation of life. And as soon as you get that vision, that flashback, that memory, you don't even acknowledge it or the devil. You say, God, you're amazing. You've changed my life forever. I'll never be the same. You've taken me and put me into purity and you've hid me in holiness. And who I was, I'm not anymore. I'm brand new and I'm in love with you. 
And this little picture, beep, beep, beep. And Father, I just thank you that my life is so transformed that Lord God, I'm going to this and that. And then you begin to prophesy. Why? Because in your heart you know that's not you. That is done. That is under the blood. That is over. And the devil is a liar. Why do you have to rebuke him? Why do you have to fight him? Why do you sell cheap and ask for prayer and ministry and oil when all you have to do is lift your hands and thank God you're changed? (laughs) This thing is real. It happened. Did you see how many hands rose? That have heard curse words to the Lord? This is the church. We're his bride. Do you think we're cursing him? Do you think our hearts have that inside? But the devil would love to get you in hidden condemnation, secret fear, wondering, questioning, defiled, looking in the mirror, not even sure who you're looking at. I heard these phrases and they were, they were, it was unbelievable. It was an onslaught. And, 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 and ministers and people think, well, you have a devil. You need free. You only got half saved. There's a little lingering bugger that didn't get out of there. He's, he's found a hiding place. And that's wrong. That's wrong. It's outside trying to get in. My heart doesn't want to hear it. My heart doesn't enjoy hearing it. It's not coming from me. So I sat on my bed. And honestly, I'm not being mean. I'm glad I didn't tell one Christian and I'm glad I didn't ask anybody what to do because I'd have got 20 answers. But I asked Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, this so grieves me and bothers me. I don't know what's going on in my head. I'm hearing these phrases and it's not how I feel about you. I don't feel this way. He said, I know. I said, well, then why am I hearing it? What am I supposed to do about this? He said, Dan, it's not a problem. I know you don't feel this way to me. So every time you hear it, tell me how you feel. (sighs) Is he like the mastermind or what? (laughs) So he's not bugged out and wigged out by the devil. And he's not like, well, we need to get rid of him, brother. (laughs) Why do you give him that time of day? That's like stroking him. That's like making him feel important. Yeah. Were you ever ignored in your life? Did kids when you were little ever like play the ignore thing and act like you weren't there when you were like, hey, did you hear something? I don't know. And you're like, come on, guys. Stop. What's that do to people, man? It's like, oh! Man, I picture the devil. Nah, 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 and I don't even see. Don't even hear him. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Sounds like submitting to God, resisting him, and he'll flee. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll go pick on somebody more gullible. That's what he does. He seeks like a lion, a roaring lion. He seeks through the people looking whom he may devour. He's looking to see who believes him, who accepts what he's saying. Who's not rooted and grounded in love and understanding the faith. He looks for vulnerability, weakness, targets. He's constantly trying to steal, kill, destroy. So he finds a hungry, zealous Christian and says, I'll stop him in his tracks. I'll get him to believe he blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And he's cut off and he'll lose his salvation. And he'll fall apart and darkness will fill his soul. Uh, uh, uh. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> I loved his answer. God never shut up the devil. He sat there and left him speak like an idiot. He just left him rattle and rattle and rattle. And God enjoyed watching a son in faith. And he used the devil's lie to build something in me that's priceless. Communion with Holy Spirit. It's a paradox. It's the wisdom of God. Every time I heard this voice, I said, Holy Spirit, I love you. You're amazing. You're my best friend. 
You lead me to Christ. You lead me in truth. You reveal all things to me. You bring glory to my God. You are the wisdom of God, and you are my best friend. And sometimes I would go through that intimately, and I'd hear yakety, yak, yak, yak. And Holy Spirit, I trust you and give you all of my heart. You are my helper. You are the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yak, yak. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate you. Guys, that went on. Watch this. This is where we stumble because we're timeline people. We're timeline people. We're intellectual people if we're not careful. We value opinions and human reasoning and wisdom. And Christ Jesus has become the wisdom of God for us. And here's what we say. After three days, we say, boy, this isn't working. It's not a method to stop hearing the voices. It's an answer to grow in God. It has nothing to do with hearing the voice. I could care less if I'd hear that voice every day. I could care less. Because it's not the truth and it would just provoke me to truth. It's not my heart. It just actually makes me more aware of how sanctified I am and separate from the lie. We make ourselves so easy for the devil. We think, well, if I'm thinking that, that's just weird. And I'm tired of thinking that. And when is God going to stop this? And I thought he loved me. And I hate that. And I don't like to hear that. <laughs> and the devil says, good. Blah, 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 blah. That's what happens. And then we cry more and complain more and fuss more and question more and lose more. <laughs> so this voice went on and on and on. And I remember it lasting for months. You would think after a while the devil would just stop. He just kept talking. One day, I don't know when it was, but it seems like it might have been almost six months down the road somewhere. You say, what? Doesn't matter to me. See, here's what we do a month into it. I mustn't have heard God because I'm still hearing a voice. Man, I got to do something else. I need prayer. I need deliverance. I have to have a devil. When you do that, you throw away your identity and everything that's built is shattered. <laughs> You're giving up who you are because of an experience instead of truth. When the voice stopped, one day I realized I hadn't heard this voice since I can remember. But guess what I had? Now watch. I had a communion and an intimacy at nine months old in the Lord that I would have never even had if it wasn't for the voice. <laughs> Wham, devil! And I never talked to him once. Do you get this? I had an intimacy with Holy Spirit. At nine months old in the Lord, I was being invited to speak in churches. I had seen more people healed than I could count. And I was hearing curse words in my head. But my heart is free. Oh. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. <laughs> what? The wisdom of God is amazing. I had a relationship that I don't know that I would have had if I didn't have those voices provoking me in truth. So it sure backfired on the devil, didn't it? But he's so used to people getting rational and intellectual and analytical and self-concerned and self-focused and stuff like, well, I'm tired of hearing these voices. Well I, well, I need some help. Well, that's not working. God's the same. He loves you. You don't want to hear the voices, so they're not coming out of your heart. Why would you give the devil power? So if you've ever heard those voices, oh, well, it's just another lie. So just thank Holy Spirit He's in your life. If anybody's been going through that in this congregation up until this day, man, you flip that and you let it work against the very strategies of hell. Are you following me? Yeah. 